I'd kind of like to go to the movies tonight, but I'm really not sure what's playing. Maybe I should call the local cinema and find out what's playing. I've already got the number queued up. Let me go ahead and give them a call. Riverview Cinemas, the city's finest theaters, with stadium seating. Box office opens 45 minutes before showtime. Movies currently playing include Return to Mars 2, rated PG-13 with a runtime of 1 hour, 53 minutes, showing at 12, 2.15, 5, and 7.20. Road Trip, rated R, a runtime of 1 hour, 49 minutes at 11.15, 120, 345, and 605. Go for the gold. Rated PG. One time. One hour, 37 minutes. Play at 1150, 2 o'clock, 415, and 630. And Friends Forever. Rated G. At 1210, 2, 350, 615, and 830. Run time. One hour, 32 minutes. These times are valid through the 17th of the month. Matinee tickets are $2 before 4 p.m. for all patrons. Regular tickets are $6 for adults, $2.50 for children 3 to 11, and $4.50 for ages 12 through 17. Seniors are only a buck 50. All tickets on Tuesdays are $2. You can also purchase tickets online. No wait, no lines. We're located downtown on 1313 South 260 East, Caddy Quarter of the Richards Science Museum. Visit our website for more up-to-date information. Thank you again for calling Riverview Cinemas, the city's finest theaters with stadium seating. And be sure to visit our concession stand where you'll overpay for popcorn, soda, and Pepsi. Hmm. All right. That sounds pretty good. Now I have all the information I need to make an excellent choice for what movie I'll be watching tonight at the theater. As you might have guessed, that really wasn't a movie theater that I was calling. That was actually my house. So I had to stick a little sticker on the phone so you couldn't see the number. Didn't quite want to give it out to 9,000 subscribers. In any case, uh, what you just heard came from a machine that you may have in fact heard back in the day if you ever called your local cinema to find out what was showing at that cinema. And I'm about to introduce you to the machine that played that recording for you through my home phone line. Why are we looking at these two tapes? Well, because I'm going to introduce you to a yet another endless loop cartridge tape system. It's called the Takeacom cartridge. This is a four track tape. This is a common eight track tape. And to show you the size, right here in the middle is a Takeacom endless loop cartridge cassette. Here we have the Takeacom cartridge on top of the four track cartridge on top of the eight track cartridge. Notice the tape width is the same on all three. Unlike the mail call cartridge system, which I showed you recently on my channel, which uses the width of an audio cassette tape, this one uses the width of an E-Track tape. Here are two examples of endless loop cartridge tapes made for the Takeacom announcer system. On the left you have one that's actually made by Takeacom. This tape lasts two minutes at the recording speed that I've been using. This one here is made by take a chi hole and this one actually lasts six seconds. Six seconds isn't a whole lot of time to say what you need to say but you could say something like this line has been disconnected please try again later. In any case you may be wondering why would somebody spend a lot of money on these kinds of cartridges because these were expensive. Why would somebody spend that kind of money on those when you could just buy these? These were available at your local drugstore or Walmart and these were used in home answering machines. And guess what? There are also endless loop cartridges, as you can see here. Well, the reason that people didn't use these for places like movie theaters is that the home versions of endless loop cartridges didn't have the durability, lasting capability, and had a tendency to break or wear out before their time. These were made very durably, 
and lasted a long time and could be used over and over again. So, what kind of a system would play these particular cartridges? Well, the system kind of looks like an 8-track deck. Well, it looks like a, an 8-track deck that's been mated with an answering machine. So I'm about to show you the take a -com answering system, announcer system. Let's have a look. And here she is, the take a -com announcer AT-R33 announcer system. Showing its age, as you can see, the, uh, the deck is a bit on the yellow side from its years of service. This was probably used in the 1970s or 80s, more than likely the 80s. Eventually was replaced by a digital system made by the same company. In fact, you could probably still buy one from them today. But let's just go over some of the cool features of this deck. And we'll also make a test recording. And we'll also lift the lid up and see what's inside. So first, let's look at the features. Now, believe it or not, the take a -com is not yelling rape. It's actually yelling tape. But I guess the display has a limitation as to whether or not it can display an entire T. So what it's saying is there is no tape inside. So it's going to scream that until you actually insert a cassette. Underneath the display, you'll see that it shows the total amount of calls that you've received, and it can receive them on one of three lines. I'm not exactly sure how it takes calls on three different lines, but apparently it had that capability. Uh, underneath that, you'll see counter, clear, select, and enter. These are all functions of the display. To the right, you'll see three buttons, answer, test, and reset. Answer is the button that you press when you are ready for it to take phone calls. Test allows you to play back the cassette that you've made the recording you've made. Reset interrupts the recording and resets it back to the beginning. Now, I don't know if you noticed this before, but on the front of the cassette, there is actually a small slit in the cassette tape, which tells the system that it's reached the beginning. That's pretty cool. So inside the tape well, inside of here, where the tape goes in, there's actually a little light that's looking down through the cassette. Also, what's kind of cool is you can actually use two different tracks on each tape. You can make a recording on track one and track two. For example, you could have one recording that runs during the day and one that runs in the evening. And all you'd have to do is flip this switch. On the far edge of the machine here, you'll see an input for a microphone. The microphone has the mic input as well as the remote input. There is no record button on the front of here. I don't know if you've noticed that or not, but when you plug in the remote part, the remote plug, it actually goes into record mode. And then by pressing on on your microphone, it will begin recording. Tape here is to hook up a external cassette tape from the system apparently to duplicate the recordings that you've made. I tried using it as an input and it didn't work, so apparently it's an output. On the back of the unit, we have our input for our DC power supply, which accepts 12 volts. Next to it, we have a message, or uh, I guess it's kind of a message uh, function versus a message speed. So apparently, you have a dual LP speed, which allows you to do the two tracks like we spoke about earlier, one for daytime, one for nighttime. And then you have an extended play single, which allows you to use both tracks as one message. I haven't tested that functionality, nor was I able to find a, uh, an owner's manual for this beast online. Uh, I did find one that was in Japanese, but I, my Japanese just isn't so good. Now let's show you the other jacks. Here are the phone jacks for your three lines that could be potentially used to answer calls. I only tested line one, but apparently you can use three different phone lines. So I guess it, perhaps it had the capability of taking three calls at once. Very interesting. The unit is now set up with a tape inserted and is ready to receive calls. I did that by pressing the answer button and the light then indicates. I can see here on my display that I've received a total of four calls. By pressing the select button, I can look at each individual line to see how many calls have come in. So on line one, I've taken four calls, line two, zero, line three, zero. 
and then back to total calls again. What if I want to listen to my recording and see what's on it? All I have to do is press the test button. Test, 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 one, two, three, test, 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 test. That was a lovely test. All right, now let's go to track two and see what I've got recorded on there. We're sorry, but the office is now closed. Please call again later. Goodbye. So that kind of gives you an example of what you could do with six seconds of time. Now let's go ahead and make our own recording. To do that, I'm going to need a couple of things. I'm going to need a microphone, like this one, and I'm also going to need a way to control the remote because my microphone does not have a remote plug. So how about we rig up something like this? Now I've got my remote plug connected in with this switch and I've got my microphone connected here. So let's make a recording. First, let's test our tape. We're sorry, but the office is now closed. Please call again later. Goodbye. All right, now let's reset it. And it tells me here that I've got it ready to record on track two. I can go ahead and switch it over to track one. And let's make something a little bit more exciting other than test, 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 test. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to press my little button here. Hello there, my friends. This is a recording. Thank you. Goodbye. All right, so my recording is made. Let's test it. Hello there, my friends. This is a recording. Thank you. Goodbye. Excellent. Now let's go over to our track two and make a different recording. This is a test of the emergency broadcasting system. This is only a test. Now let's test the test. This is a test of the emergency broadcasting system. This is only a test. Pretty cool, right? Now let's listen to the recording I made that you heard at the beginning of this video where I pretended I am at a movie theater. Hello, and thank you for calling Riverview Cinemas, the city's finest theaters with stadium seating. Box office opens 45 minutes before showtime. Movies currently playing include Return to Mars 2, rated PG-13 with a runtime of 1 hour, 53 minutes, showing at 12, 2.15, 5, and 7.20. Road Trip, rated R, a runtime of 1 hour, 49 minutes at 11.15, 1.20, 3.45, So I can just press the reset button and it will fast forward itself back to the beginning again. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. Let's see what's inside this unit. What in the world makes this thing tick? First, let's take a look inside the tape well, where you'll see that mysterious red light glowing inside. And now with a little light added to the subject, we can see from the far left there the drive motor and then the tape head and then our light sensor and right next to the light sensor is the capstan. On the bottom of the unit you'll see that it says take a com announcer and it's made in Thailand. We've got four screws that we're going to remove. There's one there, one there, and there are two in the back, one there and one there. Whoa, dudes, check it out. This is the inside of the unit, and uh, wow, there is a lot of cool stuff in here. Let me uh, take the camera off the tripod, and we can do some real super close-ups. Boy, am I glad I didn't have to recap this sucker. Look at all of those capacitors. There's like 10 million capacitors inside this thing. On and on they go. So it looks like this is the uh, logic control unit here, this particular big chip. And uh, what is that? It looks like a little rechargeable battery right there. So I guess maybe that's the battery that's uh, 
keeping the uh, memory for when the power goes out because I did unplug it and it remembered that I had four calls. So there's probably the relays, there's lots of relays in here, but there's some relays that are probably controlling the, uh, the unit uh, starting and stopping and so forth. Over here is the drive mechanism itself. That drive motor we saw through the front there. And looks like there's a little solenoid there. So pretty cool stuff, right? And then of course the speaker that we heard. There's a speaker attached to the top of the lid. And then the uh, LCD display circuitry located here. And then those blue cables there connecting that to the main board on the inside. Almost looks like a computer circuit board in there. And I guess to a degree it is a computer circuit board. And here's what the unit looks like with the tape inserted into the tape well area there. You can see on the right side of your screen there, in brown, just below that uh, white and red cable, is a little switch that tells the unit that the tape has been inserted. And we can actually see some of the tape coming through the side there. Let's see, let's press the test button and see what happens here. Hello there, my friends. This is a recording. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> Pretty sweet. Well guys, thank you for coming along on this journey into the world of the Takeacom Announcer AT-R33. My journey began when I found one of these tapes on eBay. And I was like, what in the world kind of tape is that? And I just kind of watched it for a while and then eventually made an offer on them. And uh, I got two for the price of one. And then later discovered that there was a machine that these tapes went to. And I bought the machine as well. So I appreciate your time. And thank you for watching this video. Please share it with a friend. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you wouldn't mind, leave a comment below or check that little like button. Thank you for watching.